Yeah, I want to continue on the Proverbs theme from Sunday, but I want to title this message, A Deeper Look. Somebody say, A Deeper Look. A Deeper Look at the Path to Wisdom. So the, the sermon on Sunday was the Path to Wisdom. Tonight, Wednesday night is A Deeper Look. And one thing I love about Wednesday night is we, get, we, we go deeper. We get a little bit deeper. We kind of dissect the word a little more. All right, if you got a Bible, uh, Proverbs 13, verse 20. Whoever walks with the wise, this is verse 20, verse 20, Proverbs 13, verse 20. All right, I'll just read it. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. So we've been talking about the path to wisdom. Everybody say the path. So one thing we can see right off the bat here is that this path requires some wise relationships. If you want to have a life of impact, a life of fulfillment, thank you so much on the keys. I'll, I'll call you back in just a moment. Um, but if you want to live a life that brings impact for God, you got to walk with wise people because you become the crowd you hang around. So Proverbs says, walk with the wise and you become wise. Walk with people full of faith and you get full of faith. Walk with people who aren't afraid to live for God, and you're going to be living with more courage to bring God glory in your life, right? I talked about how these Olympic athletes get up on the beam, and they do incredible feats, and my son, a week or two ago, we were at Urban Air. He was up on the beam, and he was doing his own five-year-old feats. He was just falling backwards into the ball pit that they don't clean all the time. It was a little musty, but we had a good time. I love urban air. But anyways, we were there, and I was thinking about these Olympic athletes who get up on the beam. They do incredible stuff. Then they get off the beam, and they do this, and they do this, and the crowd goes wild. Why? Because they performed as if there wasn't even a crowd there. They performed for an audience of one. They were just basically in their own gym, practicing with no one watching, learning how to do backflips and front flips and cartwheels and amazing things while no one was watching, so that when everyone was watching, they didn't even realize everyone was watching because they had practiced so hard. They had learned what they were going to do. And here's what happens is so often in life, we get so concerned with who's watching, what they're saying, which most of the time they're not saying much. Most of the time, they're not really talking about you. Um, we, we start thinking, what are they thinking about us? And we cling to the beam. Everybody say, don't cling to the beam. So if you were here on Sunday, I'm not going to do it right now. I just don't feel like doing it. Y'all, I just flew in uh, to, be, to, to preach tonight. I was with our worship team. We, are, we got some exciting things happening for our worship team. We were in Nashville, Tennessee yesterday, talking with some record labels and publishers that want to work with us. Yeah, come on, Jesus, favor. Somebody say favor. And so I am not going to lay down on the beam right now. I just, I've been, I, like, it's, it, it's been a long day. So, uh, but so often we cling to the beam out of the fear of man, and we're afraid of what people think. And the truth is, we're listening to the wrong people. We're focused on the wrong people. Anyone who is not for you succeeding for the glory of God is not the right group of people that you need to be listening to anyways. Anyone who wants you to be lower than them, lesser than them, threatened by your success, they're not the right voices to be listening to anyways. Because they will always talk you out of doing this supernatural thing. So this is why Proverbs says, you got to walk with people that you want to become like. So if you want to become successful, walk with successful. If you want to become foolish, hang around foolish people. If you want to make a mess with your life, then, then just keep on listening to people who are in the middle of their own messes all the time. Now, I'm not saying you can't love them. Don't, don't take this message and be like, I'm cutting every messy person out of my life. You'd probably have to cut yourself out of your life too. But the truth is, who we pay attention to, who we allow to give us counsel and advice, who we allow to direct our paths, who we allow to cheer us on or to talk us out of getting on that beam will determine whether we succeed or fail. Proverbs says it like this, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Walk with the wise and become wise. But the companion of fools, this is the NIV version, the companion of fools suffers harm. In the book of Proverbs, there's two different paths. Everybody say two paths. If you're taking notes, note takers are history makers. One path is called the path to wisdom. 
The other path is called the path to foolishness. F foolishness. Did I say that right? I keep thinking I'm supposed to say an S's after that. It's just foolishness. But the path to foolishness sometimes is disguised as things we don't always realize. Sometimes the path to foolishness can be camouflaged with flattery. Proverbs talks about, be careful listening to people who only flatter you. Because flattery can be a means of taking something from you. Flattery can be a means of controlling you. Flattery can be a means of convincing you to go down a certain path. I remember when I was in um, high school, and there was a group of guys, and, and they were all getting together to go do something wild and... Oftentimes they didn't invite me because I was the pastor's kid and they knew I was going to tell my dad. And so they just kind of left me out. But I remember one time they invited me. And um, so I decided, you know, I was like thinking about it. I was like, should I go? Should I do this? And so I mentioned it to a couple of my buddies that were like best friends. I was like, hey, I was invited to this. Y'all want to go? And they were like, I don't know. I think that's going to have, I think those guys are going to be drinking there. I think they're going to be like, there's going to be alcohol. We're all minors. And so I was like, I don't know, you know, I think, like, we don't know. And so we drove down the neighborhood. I remember getting near the neighborhood. I remember uh, just wondering, you know, what's going on there? And, and I was so interested and intrigued in wanting to be a part of this group and wanting to connect with this group. And this is the case for so many teenagers is we are concerned with fitting in more than we are concerned with standing out. We're concerned with compromising our morals and our values more than we are so that we can be a part of this group, this clique, which in the long run probably isn't going to make you successful if you get into that group or clique, right? And, and so this is, this is why Proverbs warns us, be careful whose flattery you are buying into. Be careful whose approval you're really searching for. Because the, the group of people that you attach yourself to, their approval, their flattery, their sense of affirmation, they can be the ones that are leading you down the wrong path, right? Now, that doesn't mean every person that encourages you is trying to control you because there are people that encourage you and speak life into you and they don't discourage you and they want you to go down the right path. I'm thankful for people that are on the right path that speak words of encouragement and life, <laughs> right? So don't, don't take this and go, we're not supposed to flatter people. We just need to speak mean to each other. No, no, no. There's a difference between encouragement and flattery. Flattery has no concern about your future. Flattery is full of, of shallow, empty, vain uh, words to try to get a hold of your attention. But encouragement is speaking life into your destiny. Encouragement is, is affirming the God plan on your life. Encouragement is affirming who God's created you to be. So here, here's how I know what encouragement is. When I'm doing what God's called me to do and someone comes up to me and says, man, I'm so glad you are doing what God's calling you to do. That's encouragement. That's not flattery. Flattery is when you do something you know you shouldn't do and someone's like, don't worry about it. You're awesome. You are amazing. Nobody, like, we're all good with this. Be careful listening to people who affirm the wrong decisions in your life because they're not looking out for your future. They just want to be your buddy for right now and they want to keep you on the same level. So let's go back to, let's go back a little bit. Ever say a deeper look, a deeper look. Let's go back to Proverbs 29 verse 25. This is what the wisest man at his time said, Solomon. He said, those who fear people are headed for a snare. The fear of man is a snare. It's a trap. But those who trust in the Lord will be kept safe. So safety comes from the fear of the Lord. If I'm going to walk in the safety of the life God's called me to walk in, I got to trust in the Lord. More than I trust in man, I got to trust in God. The fear of man is rooted in the approval addiction. Here's what fearing man looks like. It doesn't look like I'm afraid of man. It looks like I need their approval. I need their affirmation. There was a group of pastors when I first started pastoring that reached out to me and, and invited me to come and preach at one of their places. I went there and I remember, I remember they started talking about what this circle did together, how they would get together and, you know, they'd smoke cigars, they'd drink some whiskey and talk about Jesus. And I was like, I just wasn't raised like that. Like my dad never took me out to smoke a cigar, drink a whiskey and talk about Jesus. And if he did, I don't know. Like 
And I'm not saying you're bad if you do this, but it just wasn't my circle. And I could tell there was a lot of pressure. I would say pressure, pressure, pressure. You want to be one of us? You want to be one of us? This is what we do. And I was like, well, I love you guys. You guys have built amazing ministries, but I just, I guess I'm called to be a little bit different. And I had to have the courage to be okay with not being invited back. The fear of man has to always be invited again. And because I've got to be invited again, I got to, I got to fit in with them. And because I care so much about the invitation back to their church, back to that network, back to that circle, I will do anything to keep their approval. That's the fear of man. There's a lot of people that are connected to this, and we don't even realize it. We're doing whatever we can to keep these friends in our life so that we don't lose them. So you're sitting at a table. They start gossiping about another girl. They start talking trash about another girl. And you're like sitting there, and you're like, well, Paul, we're not smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. Yeah, but you're now entering into a sin that God says don't gossip about other people. Well, Paul, if I get up and walk away, they may never invite me back to neighborhood jam with them again. Those are my girls. We, we eat bacon, eggs. No, girls don't eat bacon, eggs. What do y'all eat? <laughs> yes, you do. Some of y'all girls do. Uh, what do you eat? Yogurt parfait, <laughs> granola. You guys sit there eating your granola and they're like, I'm not going to be invited back to eat my granola with my girls if I leave the table when they're gossiping about so-and-so. So I just sit there and I laugh and I maybe chime in a little bit and I participate so that I don't lose the friendship. Why try to save a friendship that's rooted in being approved doing something God doesn't approve of? Why, why try to save a friendship with someone or some group that is keeping you from being who God's made you to be. Now, it is a lonely path sometimes trying to follow all the ways of God. How many of y'all have found that out in your own life? The more you wanna follow all the ways of God, not everybody's down for that. And you gotta know your own convictions. Everybody say, know your convictions. Paul the Apostle says in Romans 14, We'll just, we'll go back to Proverbs in a minute, but let's go over to Romans 14 because I think it's a good word on convictions. He says in verse one, accept one another who, accept believers who are weak. Accept believers who have different convictions than you. Don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. Okay, so there are people who have a conviction that they, uh, they may watch a certain, they may watch movies that you don't watch. That doesn't mean they're not going to heaven, and that doesn't mean you're supposed to get into an argument all the time with them. But you gotta keep your own convictions. Don't lose your convictions, but also don't hate people who have different convictions. Don't treat them with a, uh, a, a I'm, I'm better than you, I'm more holier than thou, you know? He says, for instance, one person believes it's okay to eat bacon. Come on, how many, where's the vegans in the room? Where's the bacon people in the room? Where's my, let's go. We are building a church of bacon lovers. <laughs> I think we might've lost all the bacon haters because I just preach on bacon way too much. But uh, there are people, <laughs> there are people that come into victory that do not eat bacon and they do not eat steak or chicken and that's okay. We celebrate them. Whatever diet they're on, whatever they want to eat, that's okay. It is okay to have different convictions as believers. We're not all going to have the same convictions, but we better all believe in the same Savior. We better all call on the same grace. We better all repent of our sin. We better all put our hope in Jesus Christ. It is not our convictions that get us into heaven. It's getting quiet tonight. So we have convictions, but we don't allow our convictions to cause us to treat people wrong. Then there are certain convictions that draw a line in the sand. There are certain convictions where you go, I love you. I recognize you're at a different moment in your journey with Christ right now. And you may not say this, but this is what you gotta feel in your heart and your mind. But I can't participate in this practice right here. So I'm gonna keep loving you. I'll see you at church. We'll hang out together. We'll, we, can, we can even go eat together. Jesus ate with sinners. Uh, 
But when it starts to get into this conversation, this is where I'm gonna probably leave. When it starts to get into this practice that, that you guys do that I don't do, and you don't even have to say it. You could just say, hey, I gotta head out. I gotta head out. That's, that's what I say. Now, I've found myself in certain places where they start doing things, saying things that, that shouldn't be done or said, and I think it's more appropriate to just excuse yourself than it is to try to argue with them. Because then it gets... It gets really intense. How many of y'all have been in the middle of an argument over convictions that some people felt like you were saying they're going to hell and you're like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this may not be the wisest thing for us to do, right? So in Romans 14, Paul says, there are people who feel free to eat anything they want. And he says, don't look down on them. Also, those who feel free to eat anything you want, don't look down on the people who don't eat certain things you, you eat. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted both of you. Who are you to condemn someone else's servants? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. We got to be slow to judge people these days. God knows way more to the story than we know. And it seems like everybody's got a stone to throw or a tomato to throw or something to throw. Um, you know, we see people and we're like, ah, oh, they're, they're in sin, they're falling. And yet they're probably in the middle of something that you, we, we don't know the whole story. And this is why Paul says, let the master do the judging. And with the Lord's help, they will stand. Our prayer should be when someone's in the middle of something that's tough, instead of throwing our stones, we should pray, Lord, help them stand. Help them make it through this. This is what Paul says. He says, with God's help, they're gonna get his approval. They're gonna make it through this. They're gonna stand through the storm. In the same way, some people think one day is more holy than another day. Someone got in an argument with me that we did an Easter production, not because of the production, but because we did it on Easter. They were like, Easter is a, what did they call it? A, um, no, they called it something else. What do they call it when, when, when you celebrate Christmas on December 25th? Pagan. They were like, this is pagan days. Pagan days. I was like, well, do you believe Jesus died on the cross? They were like, yes. I was like, do you believe he rose from the grave? They were like, yes. I was like, don't you think the world needs to hear that? Yes. Don't you think any day is a great day to talk about that? Yes. But why did you do it on April 10th? Why did you do it on, why did you choose to do it on the day that the world says that's a pagan day? And I was trying to figure out like, why are we arguing about something that's not the main issue here? People, like, there is a spirit of division that is robbing the church. This is why we lift each other's hands up as a symbol of unity, because the world has enough division. There's enough factions over all kinds of, did you know there's like 3,000 different denominations just in the Christian Protestant church? 3,000 might be too high. Maybe there's 300. But there, I mean, there's Church of Christ, there's Church of Christ in God, there's Church of Christ in God, First Baptist, there's First Baptist of, of the, there's first of this, there's second of this, there's third of that. How many of y'all have just seen, like, you're like, there's way too many different factions going on here. We all just need to put our faith in Jesus Christ, and we need to stick to the Word of God. So Paul says, have convictions. Be convinced of the convictions you have. Don't let people peer pressure you to lose your convictions. But don't mistreat people who have different convictions than you. There's a way to hang with the wise, but to still love the foolish. There's a way to walk with the wise and still love people who are not on the same level and path that you're on. To not look down on them, to not treat them differently, but to just say, hey, I've got some convictions because I'm headed down a path where I really want to succeed this year. And so I'm, gonna, I'm going to surround myself with some relationships that are going to help me get to that path of success. All right, so let's go back to Proverbs 29. So the fear of man is rooted in approval, the approval of feeling like I've got to get these people's affirmation, their invitation, so I've got to keep doing what they want me to do. And um, I remember hearing one pastor call it the herd mentality. This is what cows do. When one cow starts moving, all the cows start moving. When one cow starts going this way, moo, moo, I proposed to Ashley in front of a big herd of cattle out at Camp Victory. And I was out there just a couple weeks ago and I was telling some friends, I was like, 
right over there, Ash and I went horseback riding. We got in a canoe. We canoed across the Cimarron River. Cows were out in the pasture. Roosters were going around. The birds were flying and the ducks fly together. And then there was a, there was a, <laughs> there was a blanket out there with rose petals. And I got on one knee and I said, will you marry me? And the cow said, moo. And Ashley said, yes. <laughs> but the herd mentality follows. They all follow. Make sure that you do what God wants you to do, not what everyone else wants you to do. I've seen people who are called to be in this church. They see one cow, and they all go, ah, oh, moo. Why is this cow moving? Some cows are moving not because God told them to, but because they got offended. And sometimes offense will lead more people in that same herd mentality. Well, I'm offended too. And I guess God leads us through offense. He leads by the spirit of offense out of, God never leads through the spirit of offense. God will always lead you through a place of reconciliation. Even if he's called you to go somewhere new, he will not tell you to just stay offended and let that offense drive you into some other decision. How you leave a place is how you enter the next place. So if you leave bitter, you're entering bitter. If you leave resentful, you're entering resentful. How you, how you quit a job somewhere is how you enter the next job. So make sure you quit with honor. Make sure you quit with reconciliation. Make sure you're not just moving from a spirit of offense or a spirit of this is what all the trendy people are doing. This is what all the cows are doing right now. God has called us to be set apart. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, you are a holy nation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are set apart. Somebody say set apart. Here's why we can't live with the herd mentality. Because it is not God's will for us to follow what everyone else is doing. God wants us to follow his spirit. He said in Romans 8, my children are led by my spirit. Those who are led by my spirit are the children of God. We, want, we gotta be led by the, the Holy Spirit, not the spirit of offense. We gotta be led by his spirit of love, his spirit of forgiveness, his spirit of honor, his spirit of faith. And so what happens is people get in that ditch of fear, and I want the band to come up, and they, they end up clinging to the beam, and they never fulfill what God's called them to do. Growing up as a pastor's kid, I remember hearing people come to my parents, and I would ask my parents later on at night, we would be in the kitchen, my mom would be making a grilled cheese sandwich, and I'd say, Mom, you were talking for a long time to those people down at the altar after Wednesday night service. What's going on? This was like in 1993, 94, 95 all through the 90s, I remember they would have late night counseling sessions after Wednesday night service sometimes. Not every Wednesday, but there were many Wednesdays. We'd be sitting in here just waiting for our parents to leave church. And they would say, well, so-and-so is going through such and such. And they wouldn't tell us the name, but they would just tell us, you know, they would teach us a lesson in the moment. They would say, it's so important, Paul. It's so important, John. It's so important, Sarah and Ruthie. It's so important that you stay in alignment with God's voice and God's word. It's so important that you trust in the Lord and don't just chase after what everyone else is chasing after. If you chase the money, you're gonna end up on a path that may not lead to life. But if you chase the Holy Spirit, he'll make sure you have the money you need to do what he's called you to do. So many people get in trouble chasing the wrong thing, pursuing the wrong path, hanging around, around the wrong people. And, and when you're in the workplace and you got people who are, they don't care about your marriage, they don't care about your destiny, they'll invite you to come and have drinks late at night, go do something at some bar, or some club. They, they're not interested in your destiny. They're not trying to protect your family. All they want is to have a, have, have a fun time on Friday night, Saturday night. And I'm telling you, there, there comes a time where you go, I love you, but I have a path towards wisdom that I'm walking on. You can meet me at church on Wednesday night, but I'm not going to the club anymore on Friday nights. And I'm not gonna keep going out to drink on Saturday. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something new with my life. I'm pursuing a path towards wisdom. Psalm 62, verse nine. The psalmist, he said this, men and women, high or low, are still just a vapor. He says, surely the lowborn are just a breath 
and the highborn. So back in those days, they called lowborn people that, that weren't born into wealth. And I know we don't talk like this anymore because this sounds so wrong, but back in that time, they said, it, you know, anyone who wasn't born into wealth or status or fame, a peasant, he says, they're but a breath. But he says, but even the people that are born into wealth and born into fame, he says, they're a lie too. He says, when they're weighed on the balance, they come to nothing. Together, they are just a vapor of breath. We're here today and gone tomorrow. This is why we can't follow what everyone else is doing because everyone else is gonna come and go, but God's word will stand firm forever. Jeremiah 17, verse five. If we got Jeremiah 17, verse five. I wanna throw that up there. And if not, I'll, I'll search for it here and, and read it to you from my Bible. If you got a Bible, you can go to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah said, there it is. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man. Cursed is the person who puts their confidence in a, another person. Y'all, our confidence is not in a pastor on this stage. Our confidence is not in a president in the White House. Our confidence should not be in a boss that pays your salary, your paycheck. We don't draw our strength from mere flesh because when we do, our hearts turn away from God. This is what happened to Solomon. Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs, started trusting that if he married enough women from different nations, he would have alliances from all these different kings, the, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the king of Iraq, the king of Saudi Arabia. And so he married 700 women. This was politically wise, but it was spiritually stupid. And oftentimes what's politically wise in 2023 is spiritually stupid still. Because God's going, why did you just bend for President Biden? Why did you just bend and compromise the word of God for mere flesh when you know good and well that the king of kings who sits above the circle of the earth, who was on the throne before any president of the United States of America sat down, has called you to live on a higher standard with values and convictions that may not be of this world, but we are not of this world. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. So you can honor leaders, but hold true to your convictions. You can love people, but you can hold true to the word of God. We're living in a time right now where people say, if you don't agree with me, you hate me. That's not true. That's foolishness. Do you think I agree with my son hitting his brother in the face? And yet society's saying, don't, don't correct him. Don't discipline your kids. You know, they're trying to take away parental authority. And they're also trying to take away the ability to disagree with anybody or anything. Like if your kid thinks he's something or something and you disagree with them, he can send you to, to parent camp and he gets to be raised by someone else. Literally in certain states in America right now, they are passing laws that if you're 13 years old and you identify as a certain gender and your parents don't agree, you can, uh, you can ask the state to remove your parents from being your parents and you can, you can be raised by someone else. They're trying to take away the ability to disagree. We have a right to disagree, but to still love people. So I can look at my nine-year-old son and say, we don't hit each other in the face like that. I love you, but I don't agree with that behavior. And when he hears his daddy and mommy say that, and we're on the same page, now he's being raised to understand what is the right behavior of a young, mighty man of God. I'm glad you asked, Liam. I'm glad you asked. Let me, let me show you from the word of God. This is our moral compass. There's a reason why the graphic behind you has a compass in it. Because this right here is our compass for the path towards wisdom. You want to walk in a successful life? You want to have a healthy family and a healthy marriage? It's not going to be found through what the latest Instagram psychologist is telling you to do when somebody's doing something. Go to the word of God. What does the word of God say to do? What's the word of God? So we're, we're following so many accounts and we're not following the right account right here. This is the account. We need, we need to follow the account of the word of God and say, hey, when I'm angry, I need to shut my mouth because when I'm angry, words start coming out that I shouldn't say. When, hey, listen, when, I'm, when I am tired and I am weary and I'm exhausted, I am more tempted. How many of y'all, let's just be honest. We are mere humans. This man on stage is a mere human. Any preacher that gets on this stage, no matter how, he, how anointed he is or she is, we are mere humans. We are prone to all the temptations of everybody else. That's why we can't put our trust in a man. We gotta put our trust in God. 
And that's why we got to follow. The compass is not what I say, it's what does God say? And you, go, you line it up. You're like, did Pastor Paul preach the word of God? You should always ask any preacher that gets on this stage. You don't ask him during the service, but later on at home. Later on at home, just, just talk and go, did, did that line up with God's word? I think it did. I think it did. Or, you know, let's take the meat and spit out the bones. 80% did. 20% was a little bit his opinion, but we still love him anyways. We're going to pray for him. You know, pray for us. Sometimes preachers, we get up here and we, we try to say everything 100% accurate. And sometimes we get on rabbit trails, y'all know, and it's just pray us back into that 100% alignment that it always lines up with scripture. All right, y'all stand to your feet all over this place. So I know we dug a little deeper tonight. We could have gone, gone even more deeper, but I just encourage you, don't miss the Proverbs series. Every weekend, we're going to cover certain Proverbs, and we're going to dig deep to go, how could this save me from disaster and the path of foolishness, and how can I make sure I'm on the right path towards wisdom, towards righteousness, towards victory? Something I wrote down here is Proverbs 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when I put my trust in the Lord, when I put my awe of God, my reverence for God before my need to be right, before my need to be approved by people, before my need to feel loved by people, that if I will go, Lord, I wanna live for you. I wanna get on the beam of life and I want to live for an audience of one. Lord, I wanna hear your voice. I wanna follow your voice. I wanna trust in you. God, I wanna, I wanna see what you see. I wanna hear what you hear. The room you're sitting in tonight, the room we're standing in tonight, I always say this, it used to be a field, but there were people many years ago that began to see the vision that God was putting in the heart of my dad and mom for this to be a church and for us to build a, a ministry, a school, a college, a camp, a dream center, now a West Tulsa dream center. And, and the, we're just getting started. But it started with people who tuned into the voice of God, who tuned into living for God's approval. There were people who tried to, there were banks that said, you'll never be debt free. There were people who said, you can't do that on a cash basis. You'll never be able to do that. Here we are. And we are a debt free ministry by the mercy and grace of God. And by, sometimes you gotta clear the mechanism. Did y'all ever see that movie for the love of the game? And there's this baseball player and he's trying to pitch the perfect game. He's striking out every, every person up to bat, Kevin Costner. He's on the mound and there's fans all around this stadium, 50,000 screaming fans. Some of them are booing his name. Some of them are cheering his name. Some of them are throwing their popcorn. They are angry, they're mad. Some of them are happy. And he goes like this, he says, clear the mechanism. And every fan is silenced. And he focuses in on his mission, his goal to pitch the perfect game. And he stops listening to everyone else's opinions. God, I pray that you would set us free from living for all the opinions and the approvals of people. God, that we would tune in and clear the mechanism to fix our focus on you. God, that we would let your word be our compass, our guide, our director. Lord, I pray, God, that you would speak to us, Lord, each, each time we come to church, each time we open our word, God, that you would just minister to us, speak to us, God. Remind us of your plans, your purpose. Remind us that you are for us, you are with us, you are not against us, that you have called us, you have set us apart. With every head bowed and eye closed, if you're here tonight and you just need, this word was for you, you just need to submit your life to the wisdom of God and you just say, man, I, I wanna walk in that path of wisdom. I want to be completely surrendered to God's voice, to God's way. I, I need God to continue to set me apart from some things and relationships and stuff in my life that I just want God to have his full glory in my life. If that's you, just raise your hand all over this room. Yeah, hands going up. If you raise your hand or you want to raise your hand, come down to the altar. If you're here tonight, you just need to get down to the altar. Come down. We want to pray with you. And I want to invite you to just lean in. We're going to worship. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom on every decision that you're facing wisdom on every relationship you're in, every friendship you're connected to. And we're just going to worship right now. We're going to turn this altar into a time of surrender to say, Lord, do what you want to do. Speak to me, God. Have your way. Let's worship.
yeah. If you need to repent tonight, if you need to get saved tonight, come and join us at this altar. If you need healing tonight, come and join us at this altar. We want to pray for you here tonight if you need a miracle in your life. You know, this past week when we were sharing some of our new Victory Worship songs with some of these record companies in Nashville, they said, what church are y'all from? And I wasn't in all the meetings. I was there for some of them, but the team said, we're part of a church called Victory. And they go, wait, 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 Victory in Tulsa, Oklahoma? And they were like, yeah. And they were like, you guys were the church that got up on the rooftop during COVID and did rooftop services. And our team was like, how'd you know about that? They were like, we got a singer in Nashville named Matthew West that um, wrote a song about your church and did a music video with all your rooftop footage on TBN. And they were like, your church was well known in Nashville because there was a lot of artists that were struggling, musicians that had to cancel all their concerts. And they all wanted to go to Victory because Victory was rising up and opening on the rooftop. They were all trying to get to Victory to do a concert there. And they said, how did you guys stand when everyone else was, was not doing that? And they said, well, we just, we, we felt like that was what we were called to do. Again, this is the, the beam. God has a unique calling on your life that may not be like everyone else. It doesn't mean you're better than everyone else. It just means he has that calling. But if you're afraid and you want to do what everyone else is going to do, you might miss out. When you're fearing people, you don't live for the glo- This is why as a church, we got to be more committed to God's approval than man's approval. Because he has glory that he wants to shine in and through your life. He has unique opportunities. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would set us free from every fear of man or the fear of lack or the fear, God, of not being invited or approved by certain people. 
God, I pray, Lord, that we would care more about your approval than anyone else's. I pray, God, that you would help us to walk with the wise. God, that you would help us to walk in the path of those that are headed towards heaven, those that are headed towards victory, those that are full of faith. I pray, God, that you would help us to love people that we might disagree with. God, that you would help us to navigate conversations and relationships with honor and wisdom and respect, just like Paul the Apostle talked on. But Lord, help us not to lose our conviction in the midst of wanting to love people. I pray, God, that we would continue to walk in that conviction of the fear of the Lord. God, that we would trust in you above all else. Just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins, all of my sins. And I confess that I need you, my Lord and Savior. You died on the cross. You rose from the grave. And I receive your salvation. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your wisdom. And I'm going to walk in it. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free from the fear of man and the path to foolishness. I'm gonna follow you. I'm choosing wisdom. I'm choosing faith. I'm choosing your word as my compass. Holy Spirit, direct my steps. I'm all yours. In Jesus' name, amen.